Ever since FBI agents swooped into Donald Trump's Florida state with a search warrant on Monday, the question's been, what exactly was so important? They're investigating the former president. For U.S. media speculated they feared nuclear secrets would get out without urgent action. Multiple sources said that, that escalated their desire that they believe those documents were there to get in immediately. Today, a federal magistrate unsealed the warrant and gave a brief list of what agents seized. 20 boxes of papers that could violate U.S. espionage laws. They found 11 sets of classified documents, secret, top secret, and some beyond top secret, a category called SCI. But the list is vague on what's in these papers. One is labeled information on the president of France. Most are simply described as miscellaneous. No word on nuclear secrets, but enough to fuel the political storm sparked by the seizure. Republicans repeating, it's all a witch hunt by a Democratic administration. Yes. The FBI raid of President Trump is a complete abuse and overreach of its authority. Democrats firing back. Their remarks are dangerous, despicable, uh, and disappointing. Pointing to the kind of violence triggered by the debate when an armed Trump supporter attacked FBI agents in Ohio before being shot by them. He had urged others to kill officers on site on social media. The White House has stayed quiet on this until this brief comment from the vice president tonight. Well, as a former prosecutor, I will tell you, I don't speak about anybody else's case. <laughs> I, I'm, I, but I have full confidence that the Department of Justice will do what the facts and the law requires. As for Trump, he spent the day venting his anger on social media. He condemns the warrant and the FBI's search of a former president's home as unprecedented, something no one disputes. Sasha Petrosik, CBC News, Washington. So that's what's going on in terms of the, the legal part of this story. But what about the politics? Let's get into that with uh, Paul Hunter. And Paul, let's begin with how this is playing out with Republicans. Well, inexplicably, Ian, though I think it's now fair to say predictably, Republicans are embracing and defending Trump on this. The loyalty continues even as he spirals in legal, potentially criminal peril. Loyalty now to the point of weaponization. Literally, in the case of that Trump supporter who attacked the FBI office in Ohio this week, and figuratively in the list of senior Republican lawmakers already threatening they'll take action against the Justice Department on this if they regain control of Capitol Hill, simply for daring to investigate Trump. The added difficulty is when it comes to those Trump supporters, though. Trump's you know, fake news mantra has proven to be very effective. To them, it means don't believe anyone but Trump and those Republican lawmakers who stand by Trump, thus effectively are reinforcing his words for millions. Loyalty and anger harden. And as we've seen, Ian, in the minds of Trump supporters, violence is a necessary and justifiable response. So the real fear is that that is where all of this ultimately leads again. And, and what about uh, Democrats? What are they saying? Well, the hope is that the more evidence that can be put out in the world, shedding undeniable light on the specifics of this, is that enough Americans will agree it's not only undeniable, but as well inexcusable, and that enough Americans, Democrat and Republican voters, will get out of their chairs and vote to save the U.S. from Donald Trump. Democrats underline the country's future really is at risk with him, and so he must be prevented from ever again getting anywhere near the White House. But Trump has effectively proven, as he famously put it, he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. No matter what comes from what's happened this week, though, millions will vote for him again if he runs and if Republicans give him the nomination, if he's not in jail. All right, Paul, we certainly appreciate the analysis. Thank you. You're welcome.